So we're talking about the respiratory system and its anatomy. I think this is probably going to be three uh, small videos. Uh, let's start with the anatomy of the upper airways and the throat. So the organs of the respiratory system, uh, just, like you, just like you had to know the sort of path that blood took throughout the cardiovascular system, I want you to know the path that air takes as it travels through the respiratory system. Now, uh, there's one way that the respiratory system is really different from the cardiovascular system, and that is instead of air going round and round and round, air goes in and then it goes back out the way it came in. Specifically, your respiratory system starts off here at your nose. Um, I know uh, humans can breathe through our mouths. That's, that's definitely possible. But the mouth is not part of the respiratory system. We actually are designed to breathe through our noses. And I think that will become more clear when you uh, get to that part of the lecture half of the course. So air is going to go in through your nose. And we will be talking in this anatomy lab uh, a little bit about the detail of, um, of the structure of the nose. Um, particularly as it refers to breathing. Uh, from the nose, your air uh, is going to go into this area that people often refer to as the throat. Um, whenever you say, I've got a sore throat, or I got something stuck in my throat, almost always you're talking about this structure, the pharynx, the pharynx. It's not the pharynx, don't call it the pharynx, it's the pharynx. And the pharynx is, is spelled weird, but you just think of it as like, Bob wants to sell me some of his ink and he's asking for a fair price. So these are pharynx. <laughs> so the pharynx we will learn has got three different regions. We'll talk about that in a second. And then from there, uh, air is designed to take a little turn and go down through this structure, which is the, called the larynx. And the larynx is relatively complicated, so we've got a few slides about the larynx. After the larynx, air is going to go down your trachea. Uh, the larynx, people often call someone's Adam's apple or voice box. The trachea, people often call their windpipe, um, uh, but it's called the trachea. Remember, zero points for those common terms on our uh, anatomy quizzes. This little spot right here is where the trachea needs to branch to go either into the right lung or the left lung. Why does the trachea need to branch? Well, because the heart sits right there. The heart sits right there in the middle. So it has to branch. The spot where the trachea ends and the next airways begin is known as the carina. The carina is particularly important in medicine for the placement of breathing tubes. Um, after the carina, uh, there, the two airways that result are called primary bronchi. One of them would be called a bronchus, um, but the plural for bronchus is bronchi. There's primary bronchi and then secondary bronchi. We'll get to that later in, uh, actually probably in the next lecture. And then finally it goes down to the lungs and I'll also be talking about some detail of the lungs. So that's the overview, and then air goes right back out the way it came in. One point I'd like to make now, I might say it again, this area of the pharynx that we call our throat, this is a weird part of our human anatomy because it is a tube that is shared by the respiratory system sending air down to your lungs and by the digestive system sending food down into your stomach through the esophagus. That's where everything crosses over. Let's talk a little bit about the nose. Um, the job of the nose, I could actually talk about the nose for longer than one really should, but the nose does a lot for your breathing. Uh, it warms up the air that you are inhaling uh, before it gets down to the delicate tissues of your lung. It helps clean that air, and we'll be talking more about that in lecture. It also adds humidity to the air. Down here in Southern California, we've got very dry air. That dry air would be damaging to your lungs. You don't have to worry about it, though, because your nose adds humidity, water vapor, to the air as it goes down, and the nose recollects the water vapor on the way uh, back out. The nose also allows you to detect odors, of course, and it changes the quality of your voice. So 
lots of neat things about the nose. The nose has got a pretty complicated internal structure. One important thing that you will recognize about the respiratory system is that our respiratory anatomy is not designed for particularly efficient delivery of air to the alveoli. A very efficient delivery of air would have lots and lots of very smooth airways with no twists or turns inside of them. Um, but our airway has not been, our respiratory system has not been designed to efficiently deliver air. It has been designed to efficiently clean, warm, and humidify the air that gets down into the lungs. And that's a different thing. Starting up here at the nose, the nose has got interior structures. So here in your nose, there are these little scrolls of bone, little, little rolls of bone called, called turbinates. And uh, those are also known as the nasal conchae. So there are three bumps inside of your nose and those bumps are there to make the air that's in there swirl around and expose that air to a lot of moisture and lots of warmth. Okay, in between the conche are spaces uh, and the air actually travels through the spaces along the surface of the conche and the spaces are called the meatuses, but I don't think that's on your lab activity. I think this is a good study slide. What I've done on this study, study slide is I have grayed out all of the terms that you are not responsible for. So everything here that is in dark font, yeah, everything here that's in dark font is a term that is in your lab activity this week and is fair game for a quiz next week. Let's start here with the nose. Um, Air goes in through your nostrils, and then it travels over these three uh, curvy bumps on the inside of your nasal cavity. Um, there are three. The top one is called the superior, the middle is called the middle, and the lower one is called the inferior. Uh, it is very difficult to uh, cons consistently identify the superior nasal concha. Um, because the superior nasal concha, sometimes it doesn't look like very much. So I always suggest to my students that as you are identifying them for yourself in lab or um, in a quiz, start with the bottom one. The bottom one is the inferior, then the middle, and whatever is left, that must be the superior nasal concha. Um, the, the nasal concha, cause the air to swirl around, also exposes the air you've just inhaled to a good cleaning, adds humidity, adds warmth. There are spaces inside of the bones of your face. Um, one of those spaces is right here, right behind your eyebrows kind of, and it is known as the frontal sinus. What else would we call it? It's right here in the frontal bone. There is a space called a sinus here inside of the sphenoid bone, immediately inferior to uh, the cella turcica. And uh, that is, of course, going to be called the sphenoidal sinus. We also have some sinuses here on the maxilla, um, but that's not on today's lab. Uh, at, the, at the upper part of this um, uh, part of the nose, we also have all of the sensory receptor cells that allow you to detect smells. And these are uh, immediately inferior to the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone. So air goes in through here, swirls around, gets cleaned up, adds humidity gets added, um, it gets warmed up, and then it goes to the next area called the pharynx. The pharynx starts here and goes all the way down to here. And the pharynx, pharynx has got three separate regions that I will discuss on the next slide. What else is important about the pharynx? The pharynx has got an opening here that is the opening to the auditory tube. The auditory tube is also known as the eustachian tube. And when uh, we were discussing the ear, the anatomy of the ear and the eye, I told you that uh, the ear, um, uh, 
uh, has three regions and that the middle ear where the ossicles are um, is filled with air and some fluid and that the air, extra air drains out of the middle ear to the back of your throat or the back of your nose, whichever way you want to look at it. And that is that opening. If I were to go up there, I would find those three bones, the ossicles of your middle ear. Uh, you have got more than one set of tonsils. That might surprise you. The tonsils that you think of as tonsils, like, ah, uh, are my tonsils big? Um, those are known as the palatine tonsils. Those are the palatine tonsils. But you also have a tonsil that's way back behind the back of your tongue called the lingual tonsil. And for this um, uh, course, you also have a, a tonsil that's up here in your pharynx and it's called the pharyngeal tonsil. The pharyngeal tonsils are also known as your adenoids. That's kind of an old fashioned term, but one some people use. Um, there is a dividing boundary between the nose and the mouth or between the nasal cavity and the oral cavity. Um, that boundary is termed your palate. The anterior portion of your palate is known as the hard palate because there's bone underneath it. And the posterior portion has no bone beneath it. That posterior portion is called the soft palate. Every time you swallow, this part, the soft palate, it gets pushed upward so that any food or drink that you're swallowing goes down the esophagus. It doesn't come up and into your nose, which is useful. I want you to know this term. The very end of the soft palate is a structure called the uvula. I've got another picture of it, but the uvula, you know, whenever a cartoon bird is swallowed by a cartoon cat, um, the bird inside usually like plays speed bag with the little hanging down thing at the back of the cat's throat uh, that is properly termed the uvula. Uh, so the uh, pharynx has got three zones and we will talk about those three zones um, on the next slide. After the pharynx, air is going to go into the larynx, then the trachea and on its way. All right. Now, we have got the three parts of the pharynx. Uh, the three parts of the pharynx from uh, the back of the nasal conche to the end of the uvula, of the soft palate, that area is called the nasopharynx. Why? Because kind of it's in the back of the nose. It's, it's as much in the nose as it is in the throat. The area directly behind the mouth is called the oropharynx, and the oropharynx um, starts at the uh, right at the end of the uvula and goes to the hyoid bone, which is right here. Um, from the hyoid bone to the beginning of the esophagus is known as the laryngopharynx, and it's the part that's immediately opposite the larynx. All right, we will do our um, larynx on the next video.